Good morning, crafty friends. Happy Friday. Say hello to Luna and her cat butt. <laughs> Welcome to FlossTube. My name is Jesse. This is the Slate Pages. These are the cats. This is the new desk setup. Um, hi. Hello. Welcome. How are you? <laughs> it's Friday, May 20th, and uh, we're going to try to be here for FlossTube. I don't know if the cats are going to cooperate. Momo is now walking across everything as well. Um, how are you? <laughs> The color balance is also weird. I cannot, I'm having the worst time trying to get this camera to do, it's a fantastic camera. It's great for streaming. It has fantastic like video quality. And yet when I try to record for floss tube, um, I, I don't know. I don't know how to do, I don't know how to do the thing. So uh, I'm doing my best. I apologize. The colors look really wonky to me. I tried more light, less light. It, I tried changing the temperature. Like when I put it on automatic white balance, I look as pale. I look even paler than I do right now. In fact, my chin is disappearing um, as we speak. Like, I don't know if the cats jumping in changed the color balance. I don't understand. <laughs> um, let me warm this up a little bit. Okay, so it looks like I'm a human who has blood. Um, yeah, sort of, I don't know. Anyway. How are you doing? Uh, it's been a week. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks, in fact. Um, I guess May 6th was the last floss tube. Um, I didn't stitch, like, at all um, the whole week after May 6th. So, or the weekend and the week after May 6th, um, I think. <laughs> Let me check. <laughs> I just spent, I just spent several minutes updating my um, planner and I didn't, I didn't pay attention. Okay. So yeah, Sunday, May 8th, I stitched on my um, my model stitch, which I can't show you. And then, and then yeah, and then I didn't stitch again until February, or February until May 14th. So um, I spent the that entire week not stitching, which is why there was no floss tube. Um, I think I talked about that on Twitch, uh, there not being a floss tube, just because I didn't work on anything. Um, that week was taken up with getting this thing installed, um, with uh, not only getting this thing installed, but that weekend was was filled up with um, uh, rearranging the craft room and making space for this. And then this desk was delivered on Monday, May 9th. And the rest of that week was sort of me getting acclimated to the desk and then this past week um was our official return to office my my division's official return to office i see the camera is jumping that's probably because my cpu is wonky um i need a new computer y'all um it is just a fact of life um so anyway so yeah back to office starting this past monday i am back in the office monday tuesday wednesday working from home thursday and friday so we're, we're doing a hybrid schedule. Uh, it, it was both, um, uh, I was going to say both. It's, uh, it was not as bad as I was afraid it was going to be, but I also don't really enjoy it. <laughs> so <laughs> I had a lot of anxiety about it. I was really nervous. Y'all know this. Y'all know this. Um, if you've been here for any length of time, I've been talking about it for weeks. Um, and I had a lot of anxiety. Um, I think a lot of that as anxiety usually turns out to be a lot of that was relatively unfounded. Um, going back to the office wasn't wasn't terrible. Um, I will say it's it's disconcerting and frustrating to me um, to be in a, a space full of I see a shadow on my glasses and it's just it's distracting me. Sorry, ADHD. Um, It, what was I saying? It was disconcerting uh, to be in a space full of people, uh, less full than I thought, which is interesting, less full than I had anticipated, uh, which was interesting, but to be in a space full of people and um, we have received multiple emails uh, alerting us to the fact that multiple people have, um, have tested positive for COVID after being in the office and yet people are walking around without masks and without any kind of mitigating measures like nothing is happening and that's a little um it's a little it just feels weird it feels uncomfortable um I wore a mask um while I was at the office uh when I was sitting at my desk by myself I did not wear a mask um largely because um 
the the way my cube is set up even if people are passing right by my cube there's still about six feet of space between because i the desk is this this new cube is um i think i think it's actually smaller than my old cube and it's much more enclosed than my old cube my old cube was much more open but i had a window on one side um as well so it it, it feels more claustrophobic which is interesting um which is both uh, like it feels more closed in which is both more comfortable and less comfortable than my old cube um it's more comfortable from the fact that i feel kind of uh, enclosed, which is a good feeling, but I also feel kind of trapped, which is not a good feeling. Uh, but anyway, the, the way that things are set up, I basically have to sit in the direct center of my cube because that's the way that the desk is set up. It's sort of a wraparound desk. Um, and the desk is up against the walls on all sides. And, um, and so basically I have to sit in the center of my cube to sit at my desk. Um, and that being the case, there's there's pretty much six feet of space all the way around me, uh, no matter where people come from, even though I'm in a hallway. So sitting in my cube, I felt comfortable not wearing a mask. But if I stepped out of my cube at all, I put on my mask, made sure to wash my hands 40 million times, you know, anytime I, I stepped away from my desk and that sort of thing. Um, folks were very respectful about not coming into my cube to talk to me. They would talk to me from outside of my cube. Um, outside of the doorway. So, so it was okay. It was okay. I had my noise canceling headphones, which are a lifesaver. Oh my gosh. Um, if you're in an office environment and you have issues with noise and people talking and stuff, let me know. I will send you a link to the headphones that I purchased because they are fantastic. Um, they, I actually got them from Best Buy instead of Amazon. Um, but they're Anchor brand, uh, Anchor Life, I think. Um, and that's like A-N-K-E-R brand. Um, they are the ones that were recommended to me were on amazon and they're like a something 30 version um best buy has a slightly more advanced version like the battery life is longer um it's more expensive but the battery life is longer um they're bluetooth so they're wireless so i can sit and i can i can move around and do whatever i need to do i'm not attached to my computer which is nice um sound quality is fantastic noise canceling is fantastic it does, um, the way that it cancels the noise can make it feel like a little bit of pressure in my ears, but I didn't feel uncomfortable for most of the time that I wore them. And I did wear them the majority of the day for three days. Um, and the charge that it came with out of the box lasted for almost all that time, which was pretty impressive. It has a 60 hour battery life. Um, so generally speaking, I'll charge it on the weekends. I'll charge the headphones on the weekends and then I'll be good for the week which is fantastic. Um, so I, I'm very happy with this purchase. They were expensive, <laughs> but um, it has been worth it because I don't think I would have made it through the week in, in such a good place um, had I not had the noise canceling headphones. So, um, so that definitely has made a huge difference. So, so the return to office has been okay. I, I would, I would rate it as a, like, as a, like C plus ish. Cause I still hate driving into the office, losing that much of my day. Oh my gosh. So I have to get up an hour earlier, at least an hour earlier, just to like get out and drive. And then I have to drive to the office and then I have to be at the office. The first day felt like torture, especially because uh, having been working from home for um, for over two years now, I've really gotten used to um, just like doing my own thing. So I come downstairs and I turn on my computer to make sure that I am available at my allotted time, you know, so that I am, I am, I'm here at my computer, but generally I turn on my computer, I go make some coffee, the cats bug me, I have some breakfast, I'm checking emails and, you know, I, I do some tasks and then I get up and I like, I might go outside for a minute or I might go check the mail or I might run an errand. Like I can just get up and do other things. I'm not like stuck. Um, and I felt very kind of trapped at work, um, not only because I didn't feel comfortable mingling with everybody, but because like you have to look busy all the time. Like that's that's the feeling that I have when I'm at the office is people need to see me doing work all the time, which means I can't just sit on my phone doing this for 20 minutes or you know even five or 10 minutes because that'll be the five or 10 minutes that somebody important walks by and thinks I'm doing nothing at all all day because I'm playing with my phone for five minutes because I'm taking a break. Um, 
it was also frustrating from the standpoint of um, I didn't feel comfortable being outside of my cube for lunch. So I was at my desk the whole day. Um, so yeah, I mean, but there are worse things. There are absolutely worse things. Um, I'm, I definitely recognize I'm coming from a place of privilege, me sitting here talking and complaining about being in the office. Um, so as far as these things go, Luna nearly didn't make that jump. Um, as far as these things go, it, it was okay. Um, I didn't enjoy it, but it is what it is. It's good. Um, if they, if they decide that we have to be in the office five days a week, I'm gonna have to make some decisions, but... <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah so so that was that was um this week yeah that was the majority of this week monday i was exhausted like i couldn't do anything monday but i did find that as the week went on um i actually was okay so tuesday was was better energy wise wednesday was okay energy wise um like i was still tired more tired than than when i um am working from home especially because my day doesn't end until like 5 30 or 6 because I, when I leave work, I have to drive home. I get stuck in traffic because I always get stuck in traffic on the drive home. And then um, I get home and have to figure out dinner and all that sort of stuff. So it just, the, just the day is so much longer when I have to be in the office. But there are some benefits to being in the office. It does, uh, I do like the very clear delineation of work time and home time. Um, I like the, the not having my work in my, my not work space. Um, you know, my, my day job in my, um, in my craft, I like not having the day job in my craft room. That's kind of nice. Um, cause I do work in this craft room. I mean, this is my, this is my office. This is my home office too. So even if I'm not doing day job work, I'm doing some kind of work in here almost all the time, um, crafting and other things. So, um, and this is like, I feel, feel weird i think i've done twitch so long that i don't really know how to sit still and do a floss tube now i don't know because <laughs> uh, i realize i'm wiggly <laughs> and i the stuff behind me is not interesting and i apologize i have to figure out how to punch up this space because um this when i'm looking at myself in the camera this is not nearly as fun to look at as all of my crafts behind me so i'm gonna I have to figure something out um but I now I now have like a pretty permanent work setup, um, computer setup. So I'm not trying to uh, put things back on the cart. Hello, Luna. Hi. I'm not trying to put things back on the cart and spin things around so I can do floss tube on the other side of the room. So we'll have to see. Do we need love right this minute? Apparently we do. It's warm in here. I'm going to turn the fan up. Okay. Uh, where are we? I have no idea where we are. This is going to be a very ADHD floss tube. Uh, but that's who I am. So uh, did I introduce myself? I don't even remember. Uh, if you're new here, hi, my name is Jessie. Uh, I am a uh, queer, non-binary, uh, cross-stitcher, uh, knitter. Um, oh, I haven't shown you my knitting in ages. Um, knitter, uh, multi-craftual, small business owner, um, and, uh, and all the things. I usually do that much more smoothly. Uh, my brain is not quite with me today. Um, I do I do lots of different things. Um, I, uh, in addition to floss tube, I also have a Twitch. Um, I was doing lunchtime streams three days a week, uh, but now that I'm back in the office, I can only do that one day a week. So I'm hoping to stream more on the evenings and weekends. Uh, that's just a matter of me figuring out when I can really have scheduled time for that i'm hoping to once i get settled with the uh the back to office thing i'm hoping to stream on tuesday evenings um and uh probably friday evenings in addition to thursdays at lunchtime um so yeah that's what else is the what else do i usually say when i'm introducing myself i've introduced myself a couple of times recently so just check some older floss tubes because <laughs> i just don't have it in me today but welcome thank you for subscribing um i hope that you find stuff here that you're interested in uh in listening to um i do talk a lot about stuff that has nothing to do with crafting i talk a lot about crafting um but i talk about all their stuff too um all kinds of stuff sometimes it's what i've just been doing which is life updates letting you know what's been going on in my life Sometimes it's talking about things that I've been watching or reading. Sometimes it's talking about things that are going on in my, um, 
in my immediate circle as well as the the national circle, the global circle, that sort of thing. I talk about current events sometimes. I talk about the things that um, stick in my brain and the things that are bugging me and the things that are making me happy. And that doesn't always uh, specifically relate to crafting. So if you're not, uh, if you're only here for the crafting, that's totally fine. Uh, but understand that there's going to be other stuff. I, as Michelle Bendy Stitchy says, I am not a crafty autom automaton. I have thoughts, I have opinions, and I tend to share them. Uh, a lot of people enjoy that. If you don't enjoy that, that's fine. There's plenty of other floss tubers that don't do that. So um, you're welcome to stay. You're welcome to go. It's all up to you. <laughs> So what is going on stitchy wise? What is going on crafty wise? Um, uh, this week I actually did some stitching, not a ton of stitching, but I have done some stitching. So we'll talk about that. I have a finish. Um, I have a bunch of progress on a particular piece. I have an inherited whip, which I'm very excited to show you. And I also have, uh, or I don't have, but I'm also gonna talk about um, plans for, or intentions for June. Uh, June and Pride are coming up very, very quickly, um, and I have lots of thoughts, um, more of which I'll share probably next week than this week. Uh, and I also am going to talk about um, Stitch for Pride uh, that is coming up, and that is um, that's something that D of D's 20 Stitches is hosting, and I'm going to talk about more. I'm going to talk more about that shortly. So, um, and I, if I sound just strange, if I sound like I'm talking in a different way, um, in fact, let me just talk, tell you what I'm watching. So I haven't done this. What am I watching? thing in a while because um I'll, I, because i've just been watching random stuff but for most of the last several weeks i have been watching emily d baker <laughs> hi again rachel turned me on to emily d baker so and the whole reason that they did is because uh so many of us are following the johnny depp and amber heard trial now i'm not going to get into a whole bunch of details about the trial itself and who is wrong and who is right and and what i think about that um, that is a whole can of worms that I am not trying to open right now. It's a very complicated situation, um, and I have thoughts and opinions, and I'm happy to discuss that in a different forum. Floss tube is not the place for that right now because <laughs> that's a whole thing. But Emily D. Baker is fabulous. I love her. Um, she's fantastic, and I have been watching so much of her that I think I'm starting to pick up her pattern of speech. So if I, because I noticed as I was talking, I was like, I sound like Emily all of a sudden. Um, she has a certain way of talking that is is she's an, a legal commentator, so she has that like a commentator's type of diction, uh, which I really enjoy listening to. Um, she speaks very quickly, which I love fast talkers. Um, but she's also, she's ADHD like I am. Oh, that's what I didn't say when I was introducing myself. Um, she's ADHD like I am. Uh, she's a legal professional. She's been, um, uh, she's been a legal professional for over 17 years, I think she says. Uh, I forget if she was a trial lawyer um, uh, or has been a trial lawyer in the past, but she is, she's a trained lawyer. She's a legal uh, commentator, experienced legal commentator. Um, and she does a fantastic job of, of, Kind of bringing things into focus so i've been watching the trial through her channel she live streams it every day that they have court and um, she talks about what's going on in the particular testimonies or um uh or the the um cross thingies words have failed me um <laughs> So you have direct questioning and then you have the cross and then you have the redirect and I can't it's cross something cross questioning the right word is like completely out of my brain right now anyway so um you know she she really does a great job of explaining how things are progressing and whether this particular testimony is good or bad for the side that's presenting it and um you know trying to be as objective and open-minded as possible about all of the evidence that's being presented not just deciding at the beginning that you know she is in favor of this person or that person so she's only going to talk uh positively about this side or that side she actually she's really good at saying oh that was a really good thing for this particular side during the you know so she's she's very much trying to be objective trying to be really um uh, compassionate and kind uh, and she has a lot of really good chat rules to make sure that her community is being kind and um, and not being what the heck just happened my monitor just <laughs> 
monitor was like, you don't get a monitor right now. Um, anyway, um, so yeah, she's, she's really fantastic. So if you have any interest in law at all, you should check out Emily D. Baker. She's got a couple of different channels. So she has her main channel where she does her podcast. Um, and she talks mostly, I think her, like her, her niche is, um, uh, like, uh, law that's in the media so we're talking about pop pop culture law so that's why the the johnny depp and amber heard cases is her big thing right now uh, but she also covers just lots of legal legal things that are happening um in the media and uh with folks in hollywood and with uh, celebrities and things like that um so she has a regular weekly podcast where she recaps the things that have happened in the last week and then she has another channel where it's like just quick bits of legal stuff that's happening um and she's just a very interesting person she's also a nerd she's into like animal crossing and um breath of the wild you know zelda games and things like that so i mean i just really and she has purple hair she dyed her hair purple she has two gorgeous uh ginger cats um you know she's she's just fabulous i love her um she's she's still into the hp stuff which is mm. but that's her choice that's her choice it's not it's not for me to tell people what they can and can't do related to hp um but uh but that's the only nitpicky thing i have about her she's she's fabulous you should check her out um i love the fact that she strives to have a really um inclusive community uh one that doesn't um get nasty about the individuals who are on trial or the individuals who are participating in the trial like she doesn't allow folks to get personal um or attack others um or anything she's like we're here to talk about the facts um you know so uh so i just really like her style um i really like what she's doing um so that's worth checking out if you haven't checked her out um chances are you have checked her out because she has over 400,000 subscribers i think she's got like 450,000 subscribers uh this case has really blown up her um her uh fan base <laughs> <laughs> so chances are you already know about her and I'm the one who's late to the party, but it's totally fine. Um, I really, I really appreciate her and it's, uh, and it's interesting getting to know some other, uh, so we have floss too because we're cross stitchers and, uh, and yarn folks and, and folks who deal with fibers. So we're floss tube. Um, but there's apparently a law tube as well where lawyers and legal commentators make videos all the time. So it's interesting to kind of see another piece of YouTube. Um, so yeah, so if I talk differently than usual, that's why you can blame Emily, but Emily's fabulous, so it's okay. So should we talk about some stitching? Let's talk about some stitching. Um, I, uh, so we just had the 13th of May, um, and so I did some dark 13 stitching, but I didn't do it until the 14th or 15th, because <laughs> that's how I do. Um, I have a really hard time keeping up with dates. Um, which is something I will talk about again in a minute when we talk about birthday stuff because I wanted to do a birthday sale. Um, I don't think that's happening. But anyway, <laughs> dates run up on me like I don't even know what. So I did some dark 13 stitching and I managed to actually finish my cone of doom. So here, here he is in all his fabulousness. I finished my cone of doom. Uh, that was something like 400 stitches or something so this is a piece of 40 count newcastle linen in uh country mocha that's what i'm using for all of these these little little cryptid things um this is from the creepy cryptids sal uh that the witchy stitcher put out and i'm stitching um one over two so one strand of floss over two squares and this is the second of the creepy cryptids that I have finished. I think there are 20 in total. So her design was set up for a big frame and all of these little frames go inside that and it's set up for 16 of them. But she actually designed 16 plus I think three or four extras. So there's something like 19 or 20 cryptids in total. And what I have planned to do um, is I'm actually going to stitch each of them individually just like this. So I've already done Mothman. Um, my Mothman is on the other side of the room. Um, and I've now finished the Cone of Doom. 
and I'll be stitching all of them uh, individually on little pieces like this and then eventually someday uh, my hope is to turn them into a little book um, so I'm gonna make it a little stitchy book um, and stitch the the different designs together as pages and it'll be like a little flip book that you can go through um, I'm really excited to do that it's gonna take me seven years to get to it but it's fine it's fine so especially because uh, pretty much I only stitch these on dark 13 days so dark 13 stitching I don't know who originated it but the idea is that on the 13th and the 31st of the month you stitch on something spooky halloween related creepy whatever uh whatever feels right to you for um for halloweeny goth you know that that kind of um stitching i chose uh, or i have chosen to dedicate those days to my creepy cryptids so uh dark 13 stitching for me is always a creepy cryptid and it took me a little extra time to finish this guy because I started him in February on the 13th and then um, I missed, uh, did I start him in February? I think I missed March 3rd, no, I started in February, only got a few stitches in, worked on it uh, on March 13th and did about half of it, but then I missed March 31st and I missed April 13th. Um, so, uh, my first opportunity to get back to it because I, I missed those dates was, uh, was May 13th. So there is a 31st this month, so I'll start a new one on the 31st. Um, but yeah, so I have a finish and he's so cute. He's so, so cute. So I finished that on Tuesday during, uh, Jasmine's live stream. In fact, um, Jasmine's Twitch stream. Uh, the other piece that I have been working on, uh, almost exclusively, um, is my Relentless piece from Ink Circles. I did show this last time. I've stitched, uh, how much more have I stitched on it? I've stitched at least another 800 stitches, I think. I just did like 500 stitches yesterday. Um, I got really zoned in yesterday. Let's see. So I did actually 200 stitches before you saw it on floss tube two weeks ago. And then, and then, and then I stitched on it both Wednesday and Thursday this week for a total of um, almost 750 stitches. So I have way overshot my uh, Whipgo goal for this because uh, this is one of my Whipgo pieces for May. My other Whipgo piece is Iris's, which I haven't touched. I haven't felt called to touch it so um which might sound weird but that's just um i just can't i can't get enough of this piece and i'm holding it why don't i show it to you um i just can't get enough of this piece so i i've put almost a thousand stitches in it just this week um my goal for um this year was to put in at least a thousand stitches at this point i think i've put in closer to 1500 maybe 1600 during the month of may um because i just don't want to stop i just don't want to stop i just love it I love it. I love it. Um, I think this is a fabulous piece for somebody like me who um, gets bored easily, needs to, to switch tasks fairly often, but not too often, um, because it, you can color complete to, to a certain degree. Um, and when I get bored with one color, I just finish out that thread and then I move to a different color because the colors just flow all the way through it. Um, so it's, it's one of those pieces where I, I just don't ever quite get to a place where I'm like, okay, I'm done stitching this for a while. Um, because when I'm tired of bouncing around with the colors, I go back to the, to the outline for a while. When I'm tired of the outline, I start bouncing around the colors again. And it just like, it's endlessly fascinating. I love the way, why does my monitor keep doing that? The hell? <laughs> That's never happened. And today it's ha it's just like the monitor's like, nope. Okay then, uh, we'll see how this goes. Um, but yeah, so um, I just, I never get tired of stitching on this. So I don't know, I don't know when I'm gonna get to that point where my brain is like, okay, we're done, we're done. We can put this away for a while. I'm not there yet, I'm not there yet. Um, and I probably won't be there before the end of June because this is one of my big pride pieces and my, my plan is to, um, or my intentions are to stitch lots and lots of rainbows in June because that's what I do. I stitch all the rainbows in June. So this'll be, this'll be a focus piece for June because I love it and I just keep wanting to stitch it. Also, um, 
Twisted Rainbow Sampler will come back out in June at some point, most likely. Um, also, Trans Pride Unicorn will come out in June because all the pride all the time. Um, but part of the reason that I stitch these in other parts of the year is because it's always Pride Month. Um, it is never a bad time to remember why it's important that we have pride. Um, it's, it's never a bad time. Um, so yeah, I love stitching on this piece. I'll be continuing to stitch on this piece because I just, I just love it. So irises probably won't get touched, but um, this piece is just fabulous. What I might end up doing, the, the trigger for my brain for this one might be 25%. I'm at like 21% of the overall piece. Um, so you can, you can kind of tell this, uh, okay, let me get my directions here. Pardon my sniffing. So, okay, let me just look at it. Okay, that piece is really short. That's why it's doing that. So, I don't know how easy this is going to be to tell. This motif here, this little green heart-ish looking thing, as well as this up here, they're both pointing towards the, the actual center of the design. So, right about here is the actual center of the design. So, I'm very close to having a quarter of the design finished. Um, so when I hit 25%, my brain might let me go. Uh, we'll, we'll have to see. Um, but yeah, yeah. So that's, that's what's up. That's what I'm doing. Um, so talking about pride, let me, I think this is the right one. Yeah. So, um, I will be stitching, I'll be stitching for pride June, 2022. Um, I'll be doing all the things for pride in June, 2022. So, um, now that I'm, I'm getting into this. So this is, uh, this is, part of the Stitch for Pride um, hashtag that Dee will be doing. Uh, Dee is hosting in June for Pride. Um, and it's gonna be a fantastic thing. So let me show you, let me show you it. So Stitch for Pride Challenge um, is, is something that Dee of Dee's 20 Stitches is hosting. I'm absolutely here for it. I'm here for pretty much everything Dee does because Dee is fabulous. Um, but Dee is also um, a fantastic educator and Dee is almost always focused on education and learning and um, helping us to be better people uh, and to be better allies um, to folks who are different than us and, and things like that. So Stitch for Pride is a challenge that they're hosting next month uh, during June, which is Pride Month pretty much all the way across America. Um, so the Stitch for Pride challenge will feature 30 learning prompts uh, about the 2S LGBTQIA plus community along, um, alongside 30 stitching prompts. So every single day in June, uh, there's going to be a little tidbit of knowledge that Dee is going to share. It's going to be, um, I think, videos and um, articles and all different kinds of stuff. And it's going to be fabulous stuff because Dee always gives us fabulous information and fabulous resources. Um, and, uh, and it's going to be awesome. So we're going to learn a little bit. And then once we learn a little bit, we can do a stitching prompt. Um, so I'm very, very excited. Uh, you'll be asked to take a small amount of time to read, watch, or research a different event, person, or milestone in our community. And then after that, you can do the stitching prompt. So I'm very excited. I'm absolutely 100% in. Um, I don't really know what the stitching prompts are going to be. And if I'm prepared, for to actually accomplish all the stitching prompts, but I'm 100% here for all of the learning. Um, and I hope that you all will be too. Um, I know a bunch of you will be because I know a bunch of you <laughs> and you're fabulous humans. And I know that a bunch of you have already, um, you know, put up on Instagram that you'll be stitching for pride as well. So I'm very excited about this. I'm very excited to find out uh, what kind of things I will get to learn. Um, I'm curious to see what the prompts are going to be. Uh, if you're also curious to see what the prompts will be, you should follow D's 20 stitches on Instagram. Instagram. You should also, um, I think in their link tree on Instagram, you can also sign up for the newsletter uh, from Dee and Kari and you can get um, additional information that way. So make sure you're signed up. Make sure you go and check out Dee's 20 Stitches on Instagram. Uh, so that's going to be the big thing in June. That's like the big focus in June is I'm going to be doing this. <laughs> I'm going to be doing this um, and following all the things um, and learning the things and then doing the stitching prompts. So that's, that's the big thing I'm doing in June. In addition to that, I will be doing all the rainbow stitching that I can do. I'm going to try to get the two to fit together. We'll see how that works. Um, it a lot will depend on the prompts and, and how, how I, yeah, it'll just depend on what the prompts are and how I can work all that stuff together. Um, 
So that is that is the big, big thing for June. Um, there's also going to be a really exciting pattern drop, hopefully, in June. Um, that, is the, that is the plan anyway. D is planning on the pattern drop in June, and I'm very, very excited about it. If you're part of their newsletter, then you have already seen what is coming. Um, I'm super, super excited. I am trying to dye some fabric to go with that, so we'll see how that works. Um, I have dyed some fabric. I need to look at it and... Um, look at it against the the picture that I have seen uh, of the new design and see if that's actually going to work we'll, we'll we'll have to see but I'm, I'm excited I'm excited so if that if I find that that color works um, then I will um, I will try to dye some more of it and I'll have that available in the next um, the next shop update which will probably be the first week end in June because I think the way it's going to work at least tentatively right now i'll have uh the patreon pre-release uh patreon pre-release of um my dyed fabrics right at the end of may so memorial day weekend um fingers crossed that i can get everything done by then so the patreon pre-release will be next weekend and then the um the public shop update will be the following friday um, so that's that's generally how I do things. If you're new here, um, I do hand dyed fabrics. I've just started doing it. This will be my third shop update. Um, and generally speaking, um, folks who are um, who are patrons on Patreon get um, a pre-release. Basically, I, I show them everything that I have dyed that I'm getting ready to put on the website. They get first pick. Um, I invoice them, and once all of that is settled, then I put the um, I put the the rest of the fabric on the website. This month might be a little sparse. I've been trying to do a few things. I don't have as much um, to put publicly, or I don't have as much to to put in uh, Patreon and the shop update this month as I have had. Um, I may do a mid-month release as well to help resolve that. We'll, we'll have to see how that goes. Um, I have a special project, secret project that I'm working on that I'm hoping to, to announce around the middle of June. Um, and uh, once I get that squared away, I will have more time to work on regular shop stuff. So, um, but yeah, if you're, if you want to know, if you want to be one of the first people to know about the super secret project, you need to be on Patreon because that's where I will announce it first. Um, okay. Yeah. I think that's, <laughs> that's it for that. Um, so that's the big, that's the big thing for June is stitch for pride, stitch for pride. Um, I hope you will join us. I hope you will be up for the learning, um, as much as the stitchy prompts. Um, I always suggest that you do the learning first and then do the stitchy prompts. So the stitchy prompts are the reward for having done the learning and the growing and the things, right? So, um, so yeah, so that is that. Um, what else? I'm looking at my list here cause I'm trying to, um, okay. I have, I have that still, uh, but okay. So I was talking about timing <laughs> timing is not like time has no meaning for me. It really, I get it's difficult it's difficult and and one of the things that happens and y'all who have been here for a while you've seen this pattern um i have a lot of things to do in a particular time frame and i sort of um panic because i have all the things to do and i have i have to figure out the time and usually as as the time gets closer i figure things out and i realize that it's totally doable in that amount of time but there's always that period of panic where it's like i have too many things to do i forgot that i'm okay let me turn this off off off. I hit the wrong button. There we go. <laughs> I'm actually recording this in OBS, which is why those pictures are popping up that way. So <laughs> I didn't want to do any editing after the fact. So, um, uh, what was I saying? Completely lose my train of thought. Uh, oh, so timing. Yeah. So I have a really hard time with time. Just, just all over and in general. Um, so I had wanted to do um, something similar to what Beck did for her birthday, uh, which was to have a hashtag and a theme and all this sort of stuff. I wanted to have a stitch along for my birthday. My birthday is next week and I haven't figured anything out. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so I guess no birthday stitch along for me because I, I dropped that ball. Um, I dropped that one hard. Um, I was going to do a new start for my birthday, um, the new uh, Barbara Anna, um, I think it's called Sailing Dreams, and it's like a woman with mermaid hair um, and Heike, 
has been um, doing some some edits to make it more piratey, and a bunch of us had talked about doing um, black gay pirate sal. Um, you know, darkening the skin tone, making it a nice dark um, dark African skin tone, and changing the the ships and things to pirate ships. Um, and uh, ultimately, after a week or so of being very very excited about that, um, I decided to set that aside for a, as a set that aside and not do it as a birthday start uh, for a number of reasons. One of which is because I really want to convert that to um, almond m and silks to stitch it. And I knew that I would not have time to convert it and also order it and have it here in time for my birthday. Pardon. So um, I, I put that on the back burner. At some, we definitely have to do Black Gay Pirate Sal, hashtag Black Gay Pirate Sal at some point because it just needs to happen, right? Whether it's with that chart or a different chart, it needs to happen. It's just fabulous. So we'll have Black Gay Pirates at some point, but um, maybe not that chart and not right this minute. So I'm not doing a stitch along for my birthday, or at least if I do a stitch along for my birthday, it'll be like July or something because it'll take me that long to figure it out. Um, but what I would ask, uh, if you want to, if you're feeling like you need to do something to recognize my birthday, what I would ask you to do is uh, find a, um, uh, a mutual fund in your area that supports trans folks or that supports um, folks and their reproductive rights. Um, you know, an organization like that, um, I would I would ask that you find an organization like that and you make a donation. That's that's what I would ask. If you're feeling like you you want to or need to do something to recognize my birthday, that's that's what I'm asking for for my birthday. Um, so support trans folks in your area. Support um, folks who need access to reproductive uh, health options in your area. Um, you know, do that because that's that's what would make me happy right now. Um, there, I'll try to provide some links for organizations in my area, in Virginia and in Richmond. Um, I also almost always have the um, Protect Trans Kids um, organizations that, uh, that Dee linked us to a few months ago in Texas. I usually have that stuff uh, in the description as well, but I'll try to include some specific organizations that I'm aware of in my area if you want to support my general vicinity. Um, but if you want to support your local area too, that is 100% okay. We all live in different parts of, of the world and, um, and do what, what feels best to you. Um, if you want to support my area, that is 100% okay. If you want to support your local area, that is 100% okay. But please support, please support, um, because trans folks need help. <laughs> um, trans, I mean, L, you know, 2S, LGBTQIA, all of us need support, all of us need awareness, all of us need um, help in different ways, but these mutual funds, these mutual aid organizations are the ones who have boots on the ground who are helping specific people who need aid right now in various kinds of way, uh, ways. So uh, in the past, I have done a lot of con contributing to the Trevor Project because they do a lot for um, 2S LGBTQIA plus uh, teens, youth, young people, uh, which is fabulous, but they are a national organization. Um, so it's, it's hard to say exactly what that money is going to. I know it's going to good things, but they're not the only organization out there. And there are more direct ways that you can help folks, um, out there in the world who need help. Um, and finding a mutual aid organization in your area is one of those more direct ways. So, so if you want to do something for my birthday, uh, I would love it if you would donate to one of those kinds of organizations. That would be fabulous. Um, yeah, so that's that's the birthday thing. And then last but not least, um, I probably should, I don't know how to pause this, though I guess I could just make a second video. I don't know why I'm acting like I don't know how to film. <laughs> I feel super out of practice with floss tube because I spend most of my time um, doing things like this on Twitch now, and I don't have to like. There's like there's not as much stuff that I have to do for Twitch. I set it up and I set it and forget it. Um, so the other very exciting thing that happened this week. So I was chatting with with Michelle and some other folks um, on Sunday, and uh, Michelle was doing a D stash. And, uh, and this is Michelle over at Bendy Stitchy, uh, your friend and mine. I love Michelle. Um, 
was uh, she was doing a, a D stash, and so she was kind of going through some things. One of the things that she decided she wanted to to D stash because she's just not as in love with it as she originally was um, is a long dog sampler that she has been working on. It's called the Pilgrim, and um, she was kind of. Um, she wasn't sure whether to give it up or not. She knew that she wasn't in love with it, um, but she didn't really just want to like get rid of it, get rid of it, you know? Um, and so she was talking about it and I was like, you know what, Michelle, I would love to take that off your hands. I would absolutely love to take it um, because every time she has shown it on her channel, I'm just absolutely in love with it. And it's funny because this particular log dog, sam log, long dog sampler, <laughs> This particular design is not one that I would have necessarily picked to do on my own. Um, they have a lot of fabulous ones, uh, but the Pilgrim is not one that I've really looked twice at. So this is what it looks like. This is the full design. Um, and I mean, it's cool, but it's not one that I would have would have necessarily picked, but I have always loved Michelle's. Um, and so she was trying to figure out what to do with this. She wasn't in love with it anymore, but she didn't, she didn't really know what to do. Um, and so I said, I would love to take it off your hands. And she was like, done, done and done. Um, and it arrived, y'all, this was Sunday that we talked about this. It arrived like two days ago. Like how in the world did it get here that fast? So Michelle very graciously gifted me not only her, um, her whip, but all of the threads that she's using as well as the chart. Uh, so I am completely set up to continue working on this piece and I'm very, very excited about it. Now I'll be completely upfront. I don't know that I'm gonna get started on this before July um, for reasons, for lots of reasons. <laughs> um, one of the, the biggest reasons is that um, I have a model stitch to finish in, by the end of June, um, preferably by the end of May, but I think I'm not gonna make that at this point. Uh, but I have a model stitch I need to finish and I have all the pride stitching in June. So I think this is, I think this is gonna be a July pickup for me but I am incredibly excited. So let me, let me show you it. So this is on 40 count linen and this is, Michelle's done almost an entire page, but it's gorgeous and I love it. I love how the little, um, the animals and flowers and stuff are popping out. And this is like a, a fox or a wolf up here. Um, it's, it's just fabulous. It's so fabulous. I love it. And the, my camera is not doing justice to the colors. Um, it looks very brown. It looks like orange and brown, but this is, it's much more nuanced than that because um, this color is called um, Fall Spice. Uh, and it's a, uh, a color in cotton. Yeah, it looks, it looks just like sad brown, but it's a much, it's a much warmer, like a spicy kind of tone. Um, it's got more red in it than you're really seeing here. Um, but yeah, so she gave me all the flaws. Well, all but one skein. She kept one skein. Um, so hopefully, you know what? This is what, okay, this is what I'm going to do. Michelle, I'm letting you know. If I do happen to run out of floss, then that last section that I have to finish, I'm going to pick some random color that doesn't even go with it because, because, just because. I think that'll be fabulous. Um, so this is, this is the floss I have. Honestly, I feel like this is going to be plenty, but we'll see. Um, if I do happen to run out because of that one skein that I'm going to put, I'm going to put a, just a random color in there just, just to, just to do something weird. Um, but the camera's really not capturing how beautiful that fall spice is. It is a gorgeous, fabulous color. And I have just been so in love with this. So, um, like I said, when Michelle was like, well, I don't know if I want to, I don't know what I want to do with this. I was like, I'll, I'll take it. I'll do it. I'll finish it. Um, so yeah, I'm super, super excited. And she gifted me her whip. She gifted me her, um, all of the floss that goes with it as well as the chart. Um, and I'm very excited about this chart now. Like I said, I wouldn't have picked this out, but I am like so in love with this now, especially. So here is, here's where she's actually stitched is like this fox right here. Um, but there's this fantastic, like majestic crow here and just all these other animals. And it's just going to be fabulous. And it actually, um, it says dare to dream the completion of my labors leaves me with a joyful heart. Um, and it's got a date at the bottom and initials. So, um, and it's really sweet because Michelle is now considering this our uh, long dog sampler, which I'm, I'm here for. I'm totally here for it. I'm so excited. Um, so what I, what my plan is, my intention is at the bottom here, 
um, 59 years uh, from now when I finally get to <laughs> the bottom of it uh, I'm gonna try to put both of our initials in here I'm gonna figure out a way to put both of our initials there uh, and then I'll put the date that I actually finish it um, or if I can make it smaller somehow if I can if I can finagle it what I might do is um, I'll find out from Michelle when she started stitching this um, and do uh, you know from her date to whenever I finish it and then I'll put both of our initials here and it'll it'll be hours hours in fact I might even make sure that this this particular corner is a whole different color just because so we'll see we'll see it's it's approximately my, a lifetime from now that I will be finishing this so. <laughs> Uh, but I do hope to start um, to start playing with it in July. I'm very excited. Uh, in fact, I think I might once I finish this model stitch. Um, I want to. I think I want to make this uh, a 25/7 project. So I'll do, I'll stitch on it for 25 minutes, seven days a week, because um, because I might actually finish it someday. But it's it's so fantastic. I'm so excited. Um, it's it's just. Oh, oh, I just want to hold it close to my heart because it's. Um, it's such a sweet thing for for the uh, first and foremost um, for Michelle to to gift me her whip and all of the things that go with it. It's it's so fantastic. But I just love that we're you know it's basically we're working on this together. It's our sampler. It's our sampler, and it's just very sweet. So um, was very excited to receive that. Uh, she also uh, she also sent me this um, Al Forest. This is the color that the Cheshire Cat in the Alice in Wonderland. Um, design this is that gorgeous pink purple um floss from the the alice in wonderland um design from al forest embroidery and i've just i just really wanted this color because heike stitched the cheshire cat in this color and it's fabulous it's so fabulous um and um michelle had a skein of it and she was just ashing and i was like i i, I would like that I would like that piece. So she very graciously sent me all of this stuff and I'm I'm just, oh, I'm over the moon y'all. I'm over the moon. And I am keeping this in one of my um, 805 stitcher bags. I'll show it to you here in a second. Um, so this is, this is my Fox bag from the 805 stitcher. It's a vinyl front project bag. Um, and it's perfectly sized to, to hold that pattern but it's also um there's just something about the this fox right on the 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 um right in the front of the design the i don't know it just it just really caught me i guess it's because it's like the the fall spice reminds me of the fox and then you have the fox right there and in the fox bag it just all was all very like kismet to me so <laughs> just meant to be so i'm super excited super super excited and I feel very honored, very privileged uh, to continue this piece for Michelle because I understand what happens. You know, you think you're, you you feel like you're going to be so in love with the piece. You know, you start it and you're so excited and you get all the things and you get really started stitching it and and then you just you, you just fall out of love. Um, so when you have the chance to share that with somebody else, it's uh, it's very exciting. So um, probably closer to the end of the year. <laughs> when I do my evaluation of my shelved whips, uh, then something similar may happen from me to somebody else. Because um, if I look again at my shelved whips and I'm just really not excited about them anymore, then I think I'll do, I'll do what Michelle did and I'll check with my friends and I'll see, well, you know, I'm not in love with this piece anymore. Is somebody else in love with it? Because I would love to share it with somebody who's in love with it. So, um, so yes, <laughs> I know I keep hugging it, but it's just, it means a lot to me. It means a lot to me. It's very special to me. Um, so it gets its own project bag. And as soon as I have a frame that I can put it on, I'm going to start stitching on it because I'm very excited about it. Um, okay. I think, I think that might be all I have for you today. I think. Other than my knitting, that's what I was going to talk about with the with the pressing, the pause and stuff. Um, I will try to show you my knitting next week because I don't feel like going to get it or adding in an extra <laughs> an extra file um, when I go to edit this. So um, I'll show you the knitting next week. I actually did start um, a few weeks ago now because uh, I started it before last floss too. I started Slip Stravaganza by Stephen West. Um, I'm having a really good time with that. I'm in the honeycombs. Uh, it's moving very slowly, but that's that's how my knitting goes. I only have so much time and I either knit or I cross stitch. I don't often do both at the same time um, or do a lot of either in in the same time frame. So generally if I'm, if I'm stitching a lot, I'm not knitting and vice versa. Um, so I've had a little bit of progress on it. 
uh, especially because that's my um, surprisingly even as big as it's going to end up getting um, it fits really well in a um, a large size project bag that I got from uh, Fangirl Fibers. Um, it's a Pokemon bag. It's so cute. Um, but uh, it fits really well, even with the four skeins uh, or five skeins of um, five skeins. Yeah, it should be five skeins. I have to make sure both skeins of black are in there because I don't remember if they are. Anyway. <laughs> Even with four or five skeins of yarn, uh, it fits in that project bag really nicely. Um, so that has been my travel project. Um, I took it uh, to an appointment that I had to wait for, um, uh, had to sit and wait for Adam last week. And I've also been taking it uh, to work uh, to to knit on at lunchtime. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a pretty good travel project. So that's that's the knitting that I've been doing. Um, and I will, show, I will show you it next week. I just don't want to go get it now, but it looks really cool. I really love the colors. Um, and I think I made progress. No, I think that's the only thing I've knitted since I've talked about knitting on the channel. Um, I used to do a separate knit podcast, a knit, a knit cast, um, but I just don't, I haven't been doing enough knitting to to warrant making a whole separate video for it um and i also just haven't had the time or energy to do two separate videos every week so that's why we have floss tube uh and that's why i talk about knitting on floss tube <laughs> okay folks um i think that's it for me this is almost an hour which is good i like to keep these around an hour because y'all seem to like having that much time so um so that's what i have for you this week uh next week hopefully i will have more for you <laughs> I should at least have some Whipco um, updates for you uh, because we should have uh, new picks. I think we'll have new picks by Friday. No, wait, today is Friday. So next Friday is going to be the 27th. We might have new picks by Floss Tube on Friday. We'll see. We'll see. It depends on when Jesse Marie draws the numbers. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's what I have. Uh, I hope you're having the best day and week and month and weekend that is available to you. Um, I hope that you're taking care of yourselves. And remember, like I always say, to stay hydrated. Make sure to take all of your meds and remember that you are enough. And I will see you again next time. Bye.